Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm one of the consultants in reproductive medicine and surgery at the Homerton Fertility Center. And today I'm going to talk to you about a slightly different subject. Traditionally, we have used HCG as a trigger, a surrogate for LH, and HCG it seems to do the job very well. It mimics the LH rise and allows for competent oocytes to be obtained. It does not prevent an LH rise from occurring spontaneously too. Now, let's look at a different scenario altogether. What happens when you start seeing repeated poor oocytes coming out, mainly immature oocytes or poor egg to follicle ratio? And when you have a look at this paper, which looked at using a combined agonist and an HCG trigger and to see whether it would improve the history of poor fertilization, which basically means will it give a better fertilization to women who in the past have had poor fertilization. This is a retrospective study. Patients with fertilization of less than 20% percent in at least two prior IVF cycles were used with more than five oocytes, less than 40 years old, an FSH of less than 12 and normal parameters. They underwent another cycle. HCG was given in one arm of 10,000 units uh, to 318 patients which accounted for 74.5 percent. GNRH analog trigger with HCG trigger of 4 milligram of GNRH analog and HCG of 10,000 given 34 to 35 hours prior. And this was divided. 25% of these patients had and a combined trigger. What did this show? If you look at it, the metaphase 2 site slightly increased. The percentage of metaphase 2 sites rose from 68% to 82%. The fertilized implantation rate rose from 10% to 18.1%. The clinical pregnancy rate rose from 5.67% to 25.5%. And the live birth rate also took a significant rise from 3.4% to 20%. Now, what happens with an analog trigger? When you have a look at a natural cycle, you will see that along with a rise of LH, there's a rise of FSH. You know, we have been so fixated with this concept that a rise of LH occurs and a rise of LH occurs. We forget that there's also a small, small rise of FSH, which is important to a large number of patients I don't think it matters whether you give HCG or not, whether this rise of FSH occurs or not. We also don't know whether a spontaneous rise of FSH and LH occur. The reason is that even when you give HCG, it does not prevent an LH surge from occurring in nature. But if you look at when you give an analog trigger, it gives a short interrupted LH rise and as we discussed earlier the, the entire amplitude of LH is much smaller but also gives an FSH rise which is not seen with an HCG trigger. Now what we now know is that FSH probably is needed, is needed in getting better oocytes. We think that it increases granular cell gap junctional area. We also think that low endogenous FSH levels create more immature oocytes. It, they also may create oocytes for immature cytoplasm while they could be more mature nucleus. Now this is also one of the cases where we see M2 oocytes with a bad cytoplasm and embryologists often call them darker oocytes. Now that could be probably and I believe that's probably due to the cytoplasm not catching up to nuclear maturity. There have been trials done which used 
a bolus dose. And often these trials were done much in earlier, but they used a bolus dose of FSH along with an HCG trigger, and there were studies that showed a significantly higher pregnancy rate when you used it FSH search. A higher FSH has been probably known, during a surge has been known to provide more mature oocytes, more 2PN embryos, and there seems to be a very much uh, a biochemical change that occurs due to the FSH. In this study, a combined trigger certainly improved the chances of pregnancy compared to a normal HCG trigger in women who had at least two cycles on the same protocol with poor fertilization. Why do I believe that an analog trigger may change the way we do IVF? One is that it will take away the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation significantly. Yes, you do get ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome with an analog trigger too, but not as severe. Second, even though it disrupts the luteal phase and more likely or not you need to freeze the embryos, there is that possibility that that rise of FSH in LH may give you better quality of oocytes and probably better quality of blastocysts. In my practice, I have steadily moved over to use the analog trigger. And we are learning. We are learning more about what happens to FSH, what happens to LH, what happens to estrogen, and what happens to progesterone prior to ovulation. And probably by next year, by the time my institute gets this study ready, we'll be far more wiser and far more safer in the pursuit of making IVF treatments far more successful and safe for women. If you do like these lectures, do share them, do spread the news. I think it's important that we continue to spread knowledge free across the globe. It remains our right to learn as much as we can. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.